today's session, we'll be discussing the lymphoid system or the lymphatic system. Lymphatic system is so important to your body, a defective functioning of the lymphatic system would make you wake up to a puffy face and edema might be all over the body. Let's see how exactly, in very simpler way, how the lymphatic system works. A closer look at the body, you have the blood vessel here, which is actually surrounded by lot of uh, tissues when you consider an organ and because of the capillary pressure the fluid from the blood vessel slowly leaks out with a lot of proteins carbohydrates and lipids gets drains into the interstitial space but body never wants that fluid to remain in the interstitial space it needs to go back to the circulation and so basically the lymphatic system or the lymphoid system is an accessory route through which this fluid has to go back to the circulation. So they just go back and with all the proteins and the lipids which is got drained from the blood vessel, it reaches back the circulation. So that is a brief introduction about the lymphatic system. So you have it here, the lymphatics drain the lymph from different organs, from their tissues, the fluid gets back into the circulation. And exactly how they get it back to the circulation is, it is drained back into the venous system. Again, to know where it exactly goes, it goes into the subclavian vein at the junction where they meet the internal jugular vein. And in the lymphatic system, if you look at, all the lymphatic vessels begin as uh, blind tubular bulbs. And we call it as the lymphatic bulb. And these lymphatic blood bulbs, they drain into a meshwork of interconnected capillaries. Through a picture, I would like to make it more clear for you all. So you have the picture here. You can see that the lymphatic vessels are all beginning with blind bulbs or the lymphatic bulbs. And you can see that the lymphatic bulbs are draining into a smaller vessels. We call it as the initial lymphatics. And these initial lymphatics, there are so many initial lymphatics, and these initial lymphatics drains into the lymphatic capillaries. And the lymphatic capillaries, they join the larger lymphatic vessels, which are the collecting lymphatics and the collecting lymphatic. So many of them joins the larger lymph duct. And it's these larger lymph ducts which drains into the subclavian vessel where it joins the internal jugular vein. And one more important thing to be noted here is neither the initial lymphatics nor the lymphatic capillaries do not have any valves in them. It's only the collecting lymphatics which has the valves and you can see it marked in the picture here. And one more thing to be noted here is you can see a black arrow in the figure here at the tubular fluid and arrow's direction needs to be observed. So this black arrow's direction shows the direction of movement of the lymph. So it becomes very clear for you all, the tissue fluid, which is getting accumulated in the interstitial fluid, along with lipids, proteins, carbohydrates, different ions, everything needs to go back to the circulation. It enters through the blind tubular fold, then to the initial lymphatics, to the lymphatic capillaries, the collecting lymphatics, the lymphatic duct, the subclavian vein and the internal jugular vein and it's back into your circulation with all the contents of the lymph, it reaches back the circulation. And so finally what the lymphatic system does is, it is avoiding any kind of accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space which is very essential for the fluid balance in the body. <coughs> So we have whatever I have explained now have been beautifully depicted in a flow chart here. You have the lymphatic bulbs. From the lymphatic bulbs, you know, it comes to the initial lymphatics, then to the lymphatic capillaries, the collecting lymphatics, which has the valves in it, then the larger lymphatic ducts, then comes the subclavian vein, and then finally to the internal jugular vein. And, you know, very important point to be noted, the valves are present only in the collecting duct. There are no valves in the initial lymphatics or the lymphatic capillaries. Now, let's see, I talked about the tissue fluid in the interstitial pace and all of them getting drained back into the blood vessels. 
But one very important thing to be noted here is there are five places in the body where we actually don't have the lymphatic system. They are the bones, the teeth, the cartilage, placenta and the central nervous system. These three places doesn't absolutely have any lymphatic drainage. And another important point to be remembered here is lymph, the fluid gets into the interstitial space because of the transcapillary exchange and because of the exchange between the tissue fluid and the lymphatic ducts. And lymph, the fluid basically what is circulating in the lymphatic duct is nothing but a modified tissue fluid. Now let's come to the composition of lymph. Composition of lymph, first we need to see about the proteins. Now the protein content of the lymph is around 2 to 6 milligram percentage. But please keep in mind the lymph which is draining the liver has much more protein content than what is here in the marked as 2 to 6 milligram percentage. Now coming to liquid lipids, you can see that the intestinal lacteals, intestinal lacteals is nothing but the lymphatic system of the intestine. Now the intestinal lacteals compared to the lymphatic drainage of any other organ has much more lipid content in them because you all know that maximum lipid absorption is happening at the intestine. Now number three you have the carbohydrates. Lymph has carbohydrates but you compare the composition of carbohydrates of lymph and the plasma, it's very clear that the composition of uh, carbohydrates in lymph is much lesser than in plasma. Coming to the next one, you have even clotting factors in the lymph. But what again what happens is, the lymph which is draining the liver has the maximum amount of clotting factors. We have cells and you have lymphocytes much more in number and the limbs. There are monocytes but they are very few in number. Now coming to ions, you have sodium ions, potassium ions, chloride ions, calcium ions, sulfates and phosphates present in the lymph. And then you have the major content contribution by water. So that's about the composition of lymph. Now coming to the function. Lymph or the lymphatic system in the body has a very major role to do. So coming to the function, let's go one by one. It prevents edema formation. How does it prevent edema formation? Because as I started with, from the blood, the fluid oozes out into the interstitial space. And it's not only fluid, you know, from the composition, we already know that proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, uh, clotting factors, there are so many content which is getting accumulated in the interstitial space along with the water. And if it accumulates in the interstitial space, if that fluid is not able to go back to the circulation, along with the proteins and all the other contents, what is going to happen is body is going to form edema. So unless the lymphatic system is properly functioning, edema formation cannot be avoided. So prevention of edema is a very major function of the lymphoid system. Now second you have, it maintains the protein content of the plasma. So you remember when I discussed the composition of uh, lymph, 2 to 6 milligram percent of proteins are present in the lymph. But if you can remember that when I told you the lymphatic drainage of the liver, the protein content is much, much high. So what happens is around 25 to 50 percent of the protein is present in the lymph and it cannot be retained there. It needs to go back to the plasma. So it is this lymph which is transferring the proteins from the interstitial space back to the plasma. So indirectly, what is the lymphatic system doing? It is actually maintaining the protein content of the plasma. The third point, fat absorption and transport. Now when it comes to fat absorption and transport, we need to make a mention about the long chain fatty acids, cholesterol and the fat soluble vitamins. All of them which are being absorbed from the intestine, that means the intestinal lymph which has got a very high concentration of these long chain fatty acids, 
cholesterol and the fat soluble vitamins all of them needs to go back to the major circulation. So, lymph has a major role to play with fat absorption and transport. Then comes the protective function. Lymph, especially the lymph nodes, has particular phagocytes which are the mononuclear phagocytes. And what does this mononuclear phagocytes do? They actually engulf and ingest the bacteria and the pathogens which are present in the organs or wherever there is, uh, you know, there is an infection or an inflammation of the lymph which is draining the organ, it will be drained by the lymphatic system and so what it does is again takes care of the immunity or the protective function of the body. Now finally, we come to the clinical aspect of the lymphoid system or the lymphatic system where we'll be discussing about lymph adenopathy. Lymphadenopathy is nothing but the swelling of the lymph nodes. So what happens here is whenever or wherever in your body there is an infection or an inflammation, what happens is the lymph nodes in that particular area would be swollen. And for a clinician, it becomes a leading clue to identify the site of infection. So, if you take an example, if there are enlarged submandibular lymph node, it clearly suggests the clinician that there could be an infection of the throat. So, that's about uh, the, the clinical aspect of uh, lymph adenopathy or the lymphoid system.